You know, I saw this post on Twitter where someone built a similar effect in a real-time engine, I think Unity or Unreal. And for the heck, I'm not able to find this post again. So if you guys know what I'm talking about, please comment. Otherwise, this is what we're going to build. I thought it's a neat effect. And here's my approach to it. This technique is all about shaping values, shaping values of a function. And it sounds more scary than it actually is. So what we're looking at and what we're using is a noise generator, in our case, anti-alias noise or maybe unified noise, whatever you like. And a noise generator usually takes in some values, in our case, mostly three values, that is for X, Y, and Z coordinates, and uses them to generate a single output value. In the case of the anti-alias noise, ranging between minus 0.5 and 0.5, and in most other cases, ranging between 0 and 1. And let's just assume that our value will be in the range of 0 to 1. So in more fancier terms, you could say what a noise generator does is it maps R3 to R1. That means three-dimensional space, X, Y, and Z coordinates, to one-dimensional space, only one single value. For example, a hypothetical output of a noise generator could look somewhat like this. Again, we're assuming that the noise generator outputs values between 0 and 1. And usually we could visualize those values as black and white colors on our mesh, or use them to displace the mesh. However, what we're aiming for are those ridges. And in order to see what's going on and what's needed to generate those ridges, let's look at a much more simpler function. Not those noise values that we generated, but just a linear function ranging from 0 to 1 over time. And what we want is to convert this function here into something that looks like this. Basically a sawtooth shape with an envelope that is this linear function here. So how do we go about this? First, let's turn those values into some kind of sawtooth form. And in our case, I'm going to use a modulo operator to do so. And modulo will return the remainder of what's called a Euclidean division. For example, if I have a value of 0.15, I can divide this value by 0.1 exactly once, and the remainder, 0.05, well, I cannot divide this any further. So Euclidean division is kind of the first way to divide something that you'd learn in elementary school. And it asks, how many times does the value we are dividing by fit into the value that we want to divide? And what is the rest of it? What is the remainder of that operation? So for example, when we have the value 0.15 and we divide it by 0.1, 0.1 fits into this value exactly once. And then there's a rest, the remainder, which is 0.05 in this case. And the remainder will rise and rise and rise until we try to divide 0.2 by 0.1. Now 0.1 fits exactly twice into this value and there is no remainder. So the function of the remainder drops again and then rises, rises, rises. Over here, this is 0.2, drops to 0, again rises, 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 0.3, drops to 0, and so on, and so on, and so on. So this way, we're generating a sawtooth function. However, as you can see, those values of a sawtooth function only range from 0 to, well, pretty close to 0.1. They will never reach 0.1, but they will tend towards it. So let's bring them back into the range of 0 to almost 1. And to do that, in our case, we would have to multiply those values by 10. Because again, right now they are between 0 and something close to 0 0.1. So times 10 is between 0 and 1. But more generally speaking, we want to multiply this by 1 divided by 0 0.1, which in our case is 10. But imagine if you put some other value up here in our modulo function, you want to take care of that down here too. So that'll remap this sawtooth function into the range of 0 and 1. And finally, what we want to do is bring back that envelope shape. And we do that by simply multiplying our sawtooth shaped function here with the original function. So it results in this shape here. And that is the whole mathematical machine we're going to build in order to create those ridges. Now, if we pipe something else than this linear function into it, for example, a noise generated by anti-alias noise, we will see those intricate forms and shapes appearing. So let's build this by dropping down a sphere diving in there, setting its primitive type to polygon, and really dialing up the frequency so we have a very, very fine mesh on which we can work. Next, I need normals in order to do a very basic displacement. And I want to use point normals. Why this in here? Highlight it. Maybe check for the normals. Yes, they are very dense, but they are there. And then, as some of you guys prefer vops over vex, let's today use a point vop, wire in our geometry in here, and dive into the vop. And what I want to do in here is I want to displace my positions along the normal. So I drop down the displace along normal VOP here, wire in the position, and it also needs the normal, and then it outputs a displaced position. And in here, 
you can see when I head up one level and actually highlight the point fob, then dive back in, you can see I can now displace the sphere here by this displacement amount slider. And it's this displacement amount slider that I want to drive with my noise. So let's first drop down a quick anti-alias noise, which needs our position as an input and will output a noise here, which I could wire in the amount directly. And you can see that displaces my sphere quite a bit. Let's dial back the roughness and increase the frequency to two by two by two. However, the values coming out of my anti-alias noise here are between minus 0.5 and 0.5. And I want to remap them to be in the range between zero and one. So I'm gonna use a fit node here, fit range, wire in the value in here, and the source minimum is minus 0.5, and the source maximum is 0.5, and we want to remap this to zero and one. Again, wire this into our displacement amount, and we are now only displacing outward. Next, let's start generating those ridges by using a modulo. Again, just popping it in here, and then decreasing the modulo value to 0.1, and you can see those ridges start appearing. Let me just head up one level and after the point VOP, drop down another normal to recalculate our new normals here. So the shading looks better. Also wanna set this to smooth shading like this. And you can see those artifacts here, they are due to the resolution of our mesh. So either you could increase your mesh's resolution or do all of this in a shader. Okay, back into our point VOP. Now that I'm just looking at the remainder of our division operation here with the modulo, also these values here that come out here have decreased, so they are not ranging between zero and one anymore. And you can see if I further dial back my divisor here in the modulo, you will see the displacement height also decreases. So let's remap this by just multiplying with a constant here, wire this in here. And in our case, let's set the divisor to 0 0.1. That means I will have to multiply by 10 to get back into the range of zero and one like this here. And in the end, I wanna drive this setup by specifying how many ridges I would like to generate in our value range between zero and one. And as you can see, this multiplier also serves as kind of the indicator how many ridges there will be. So let's head up one level here and with the point VOP selected, click on this cogwheel symbol here, go to edit parameter interface and with that window open, I'll dive into the point VOP here and just drag out this multiplier, hit apply and accept. So when I go up one level on the point VOP, I can now see this multiplier here, which currently just scales the whole thing. So let's dive into the point VOP again right click on the multiplier, go to copy parameter, and in the modulo, what I wanna do in here, I want to type in the expression. So I want to have 1.0 divided by, and then I'll paste the relative reference of this value here. So now I'm dividing one by 10, which will result in the exact same value, but with the advantage that when I go up and dial in this multiplier here, you can see the height remains constant, just the amount of ridges changes. The only thing left to do is, again, scale this with the overall shape of our noise. So I'll drop down a multiply node, and I'm gonna multiply this modulo and remapped value with our original value, ranging between zero and one, like this. So we now are shaping our ridges with our original noise function's values. What I like to do to give the artist a bit control over that is add two ramps in here to control the shape of the ridges and of the overall envelope. So let's drop a general envelope ramp in between here, call this ramp underscore envelope, set it to be a spline ramp, go up one level and just set the ramp envelope to be linear for now, dive back into the point bob, create a second ramp, and after we refit our modulo here, drop this ramp, call this one ramp underscore ridges, and also set it to be a spline ramp. Again, go up one level and also just increase the value of that slider here. So what I can do now is on the one hand, shape those individual ridges. So instead of a sawtooth wave, I can now shape them in a triangle wave like this. And also up here, when we break that out, maybe set those curve points to be a B spline and add another point in here. So we can now dial in the overall shape, the overall envelope of that function. And this is all that's needed to generate those intricate ridges there. 
So I hope this one gave you a general idea of how we approach some of the setups that we build and a bit of the mathematical background that we go through, which most of the time isn't as explicit as we've shown here. It's just a general idea of what you want to try out and what you're going through and stuff you're trying out either in a point fob or in VEX. So just to give you an insight of the mathematical recipe that underpins some of those easier setups and quicker setups. All right, as always, I hope you had fun. Please share your artwork. We're always intrigued to see what you guys come up with. If you want to learn more about Houdini, have access to in-depth courses, you might want to check out our Patreon. And maybe you're already supporting us there, so thanks so much. And a very special thank you goes out to Kyoko Sakane, Important Looking Pirates, Joseph Howerton, Derek A. Johnson, Nick Nick, Chris Hebert, Rafik Anadol, Rob Bryan Jr., and Mohamed Al-Abri. Thanks so much, guys. With that, it's cheers and goodbye.